Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Tuesday, September 8th, 2015. Welcome here to the Dectacular here. We're in a chill mood today. It's We're a little out of focus when we lean up. No, maybe that looks good. Maybe we'll lean back a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. My camera's factory settings reset, so fuck it. I might be a little blurry today. That's okay. What you don't notice is how smooth my face is. It's so smooth. Like, I still have... Like, we have the, the acne sort of receding a little bit. You know, it's it's curses are still... are still residually there, but... My face is so smooth. I am now the proud owner of a safety razor, a badger fur brush, shaving soap, a shaving mug, and these unbelievably precise, incredible razors. I have talked for years about how much I fucking hate shaving, and now I love shaving. Oh my god, I like get the lather going, I get the lather going, I do the, the, do this shit. I feel so manly. Oh my god, I feel like my name should be like Chesterford Rutherford or something incredibly upscale like that. Like, like Pulse and Clemency Guttelson. Like that's the sort of name that I expect to have with like a handlebar mustache and a smooth face because I shave with a real razor. Oh my god. And the result is that my acne's like clearing up like fast for one of the first times ever. It's always been a sort of regular thing. But holy shit, oh my god, if you haven't tried the joy that is a safety razor, get yourself a safety razor and experience the joy. Okay, did you know? Okay, look, I'm coming back here. Did you know that the blades for razors are incredibly cheap? I did not know this. Like, I've spent so many years getting really expensive, like, Mach 3 cartridges. Never! Never again! Do you, do you know how much my blades are? They're like, 13 cents. 13 cents? None of those, like, like, triple, like, they have, like, a bear claw. They have, like, three layers of bear claws, and you just rake your face until the hair's gone, and you're like, well, alright, it is brand name. No! A 13 cent razor. Scarbane says, wait, are you being sponsored by a shaving company? Have I said a shaving company? Have I said it? I am sponsored by the concept of shaving with a real razor. I am sponsored by a concept. Here's what we're doing today. Here's what we're doing today. We're rocking out Calento's indubitably unbelievable priesthood. It's a, it's a dragon priest, but of the control variety, which is really exciting. God, that focus is actually going to slay me unless I fix it. Incredible. God, look at that face. You wouldn't know it, but it is smooth. It is really smooth. Oh, lack me. Fuck, I don't care. Overall, very smooth. Overall, feels very good. So, uh, the Dragon Priest was something that cropped up a lot uh, when the good old TGT came out. And I think one of the big reasons is that with Wormrest Agent and... Twilight Whelp. Keep in mind, Twilight Whelp is a dragon, despite being a one-drop, which is great. We have Wormrest Agent, we have the Twilight Guardian as well. These really screamed, hey, priests, get a little dragons going in there, do some good stuff. So I've been seeing a lot of aggressive variants of the Dragon Priest. I've played against several of them on the ladder. Um, but this one has not only a good amount of the board presence type bits, such as Wormrest Agent and uh, Twilight Guardian early on, um, also some other cool control -y bits, like Double Shrink Meister, Double Cabal Shadow Priest, a Vol'jin. Um, I'm really excited to play this. I haven't actually played with any of the Dragon Priest stuff. And this particular list is from Kalento, who is one of my absolute favorite, 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 favorite people out there. Hmm. Also, we had a sub that I wanted to say hello to. Oh my god, Little Big Eleven! What up, Little Big Eleven? It's been quite some time. Little Big Eleven, Undoing good to see you. Wispy Rexa. Wind, or should I say Wispy Wine? I don't know. Which is the wrong one? Let's say that a whole bunch of times. Do I want a Shadow Word Paint against an Unta? I actually have no idea how to evaluate this particular thing. I really don't. I don't know if I should be focused more on board control or not. Time to play some... Play some Colento Dragon Priestess. Oops, nope. Don't add a photo. Tweet it. I, I think I'm gonna keep it for now. I don't really know. I really, really, really am unsure. 
part of me wants to say like, oh yeah, we should um, be favoring the board controllers, but whatever. In other exciting news, we had a blog post today. One of several in an upcoming series of blog posts from Artillery Games. Woo! I'm gonna go ahead and post this Shia in the chat. I think it's blog.artillery.com. I hope so. Bam! Okay, you ready? You ready for the news? Wait, do I just kill this or do I get ready to participate? I think I do this. And the next turn, I can do both. We had an announcement that we are going to make a native client for our game. Boom! Uh, originally... Ugh. Don't trade, bro. Don't trade. Don't trade. Don't. 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 DB Sniper. You cheeky sniper. Don't trade. I'm going to tell you, but first of all, don't trade. I want to tell you, maybe, maybe, maybe DB Sniper is holding it up so we can talk about it now. Don't trade, don't kill the three, four. But yeah, so originally when we went into the creation of um, artillery, the goal was to build technology that would allow a beautiful 3D game to run natively in the browser. Like imagine if you could just go to hearthstone.com and it just loaded just like this. Wouldn't that be lovely? My fate is sealed. That would be awesome, right? That would be so awesome. If you could go to whatever.com, you go gta5.com, and then boom, the game's running right there in the damn browser. That would be hash brown tight. So I'm going to shoot it. So I'm going to go down a little bit. I think this is okay. I think we can start fighting the good fight. Cool, right? And, and the thing is that, like, we'd want it to be that you went there and it would just load for a little bit and then boom, there you would be playing. And it wouldn't be you have to sit there for 45 minutes and download a whole thing. It wouldn't need to be that. <clears throat> Let's see here. I think I want to do this. This, and then this. Yeah, RuneScape. Perfect. <laughs> um, yes, the goal would be to deliver, like, really high-fidelity, high-quality, like, modern-day graphics, right? That and Wouldn't that be cool? And I remember when I first <laughs> talked to uh, Anker, CEO at Artillery, and he explained to me this was the goal. I was just like, you can't do that, and I gave him some reasons. And then he showed me it working. <laughs> he showed me it, like... Functioning, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Right? It was. Oh, did we die? It was. It was super duper 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 fucking sick. Let's get it done. I think we win. I think we win. I think we do. And so over time, it is amazing. Those engineers artillery, holy shit, they're amazing. Like, the graphics actually work. Like, they look lovely, and the response and the input feels so good. Oh, it's amazing! And then there's little things that are just not what you think would be the actual problem that are like the actual for real problem we might have died well played. we did no problem like one of the problems is like you currently can't confine a mouse cursor well in chrome so like when you scroll to the edge like imagine edge scrolling in starcraft if every time you did that it just moved to the other monitor wouldn't that be awful uh, well, that happens. Um, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of other little things that I can imagine um, might be fixable at some point. But, I mean, most of all, 
if we don't change any code at all in our game and our stuff, Chrome could do an update that's amazing for all their users, but somehow breaks our game. So that is part of the reason why we are doing a, uh, a native client. So that way we, you know, we can continue to have all the stuff that runs in the web. Like, you still play the game, replays still work, all our tools run in browser. But we just also have a native client to just make that experience a little better. Which is cool, so that's, that's what the blog's about. I'm gonna repaste it again. Boom! Come boom! Ooh, this hand. Oh yeah, this hand do. I'm really excited about that. You know, one of the awesomest things, one of the awesomest things ever about having something that is like web based, is it makes playtesting unbelievable. Do you realize how we playtest? We we go to the playtesters and we say, "Ooh, a Twilight Well." Fuck yeah. We say, "Hey, go here," and we just have a URL and they click it and then we're playing against them. Oh, that's so awesome. That seems like a good play. Let's go ahead and do that. Are you mocking me? The damned stand ready. I think he's running my deck. So I think we won, right? The instant you cast Valen's Chosen, you're just undestroyable. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh my God, Perscom, you're about to just you're about to just be hurt by me. With the recent release of Metal Gear Solid Five, everyone is on that train. How do you feel about the Metal Gear series? Ready to get hurt? It's gonna hurt. Not quite what was planned. It's gonna hurt to say. It's gonna hurt even more to know that you heard me say it. Should I do this? I kinda want to. How do we do this? I think I have to do a little kill in here. I've never played any Metal Gear Solid game. I can't believe it. I've never killed any, 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 any. Never played a single one. Isn't that sad? But my understanding of it is that to do something, I need to press the action button. Senfang, what up? Mm. Never played it? Isn't that insane? It is remarkable to me. I mean, my brother has played it enough when, you know, we lived together in high school. <laughs> snake! 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 Holy shit, a wreck waffle says some crazy thing happened to me. I opened a light bane and, and bark bane in the same pack. Oh my god! Did you also get dark bone and bark bane? <laughs> oh, bark slain. Never played a single one. That's insane. Got control of the bard. Snake, to climb the ladder, press the action button. <laughs> Snake, to climb the ladder, the fuck the fourth wall. Okay? Alright, what about Metal Slug? Oh, I played some Metal Slug, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Right. I've got the power, baby. Can you feel more power, baby? I think I just beat him. Seriously, get 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 your discounts, man. It's cool. Metal slug. Oh! Poncho the dog. Hey, first time sub to anything on Twitch. I've watched the channel for a while now. Thank you so much, Poncho the dog. You're you're like my favorite dog. Like if you were here, I'd like scratch you behind the ears and make you do like a leg thing and shit. It would be totally unreal. 
Pleasure to have you here. I hope you understand that the greatest benefit to being a Day9 TV subscriber is the Day9 TV chat, the number one chat on Twitch, world renowned. There is no chat on this entire site that is better than the Day9 TV Twitch chat, period. I mean, that's because we grew nice and slow over an extremely long period of time. We weren't, we, we didn't spike ever. We have never been a spiky mm. guy. Snake. Snake. Snake! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, huh? Oh, oh, his hand cost is getting low. Power Verb Shield. Here's what I'm gonna do. Joink. Hey. Done. Here's the best chat ever. Best chat. And you know, here's the thing. If you ever are feeling a little bored, and you're like, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's like 11.30 p.m. on a Wednesday, I don't know what I want to do, but I definitely don't want to go to bed. If you're looking for a place to hang out, look, go to twitch.tv slash day TV and just hang out in the chat. I do it all the time. Just show up. Hey, here's some music links. I start pasting music in there, listening to it uh, with people there. It's great. Justinian says, do you use a poker hub? When playing online, do you mean a poker HUD? Like an H U D? <laughs> I assume that that is what is meant. What is on my shirt? Evolved from the dead! This is Husky's shirt. He gave it to me like four years ago. <laughs> I just didn't give it back. Oh my bad. God, I gotta give him that shirt. Toasted M probability. Determine that his chances of winning or no. Davy Three Games says, "Sean, I haven't seen you live in about four months. I've been out of the country in Austria. That's great, and I hope you like my pronunciation choice. I haven't lived. I assume that's what you meant to say. You meant to say that I don't, I don't even live. You haven't seen me live in four months. I've been dead. Yes, meant HUD. Uh, once upon a time, when poker was legal for United States citizens to play on Poker Stars, I did, in fact." Uh, I use... will fight with honor. That is Poker Tracker. So I use the other software. I can't remember the name of your software. It's probably Poker Tracker. Didn't like it. Turned it off. Is someone injured? Is someone? Is there anyone here with an injury? But I haven't even thought about using Poker Stars. The name of the other one. There was another hand analysis tool. I did a lot of after-the-fact sort of stuff. Hold the manager, that's right. Well, I would love to draw a card and... Boom! Ship the Guardian. I played a lot of heads up. Consequently, I, uh... The dams are ready. I like to just I like to just look at the one guy I'm playing heads up with. Think about that. Let me tell you something. It is hard to go back to playing like six max or nine max when you've been playing heads up for like three months. You see hands like Jack Four of Hearts, and you're like, "This is a good hand. I should <laughs> I should get busy with this hand." I have this creeping sensation, this guy wants me dead. Right away. How do I wanna do this? I think I just wanna Right away. I think I'm just gonna kill this, right? I was assuming it was a noble sacrifice. My fate is sealed. Tight. Boom. AK Cody says, are you referring to Heads Up 7 Up by any chance? That would be amazing if I... Professional Heads Up 7 Up. <laughs> Reporting for duty. My so I'm gonna do this sealed. first. 
I will be fairly certain that I will encounter a nerd. Alright, that's great. Give me all the HPs. Oh my god, we are winning this game so hard! Oh my god, this is... All feel powerful. This is why I'm not so sure how good those secret decks are. Reporting for duty. I wield the power. Boom. No consecration gonna touch these lips today. God, yeah, poker heads up so fun. Who am I? None of your business. <laughs> oh, all right. The spirits be restless. Death to the pretender. That was a good turn for us. Boom. Cub. Boom. Double Murloc Knight. Hey, okay by me. Reporting for duty. Let me change your mind. Boom! Competitive spirit. Well played. God, do I feel powerful! Can you feel more power, baby? Oh my god, give me those priest victories. Mm. I feel so powerful with this deck. It is insane. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. Oh, shit. I gotta pitch them both. I gotta pitch them. How was Labor Day? Was, I had a restless weekend. I had a very restless weekend. Wrestling. Wrestling with tough problems. Ah! Just design problems as usual. I think I also convinced myself this weekend that I have to start playing Counter Strike again. Are you me? Like I, I have, I have to start playing Counter Strike again. Are you ready? Are you ready for the uh, for the Day Nine Design Lecture? Who's ready for the Day Nine Design Lecture, huh? Who's ready? Who's ready? And someone's like, 
Every fucking show now is the Day 9 Design Lecture. Jesus. And, uh, to you I respond. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right, yeah. So if I heal up... If I heal up and then pop, then he needs to trade it all away and save your life. You think this is funny? Day 9 design lecture. I think that Counter Strike is the best designed competitive game. I give you the following. Counter Strike is the best designed competitive game. Period. Number one. Come on, hit me. Hit me. Hit me, go on! You... You think you've got something, right? Oh, that's dirty, but I got it. CS Go, CS Go. Number one. The best competitive game. For me. The best designed competitive game. Now, Brood War. That's like my favorite. That is my favorite. That's like my favorite. Oh my god. Love Brood War. Oh, somebody, somebody ship me some Brood Wars. my favorite. But I think that the best designed one is Counter-Strike. I think it is the best designed one. I'm going to explain in more detail after this. After this game. It's not great. It's not great how I tease like that. I should understand. Let me see if we can break it up. I'm going to claim... I'm going to con con uh, mm. claim... That all competitive games, competitive multiplayer games, want four things. Four really good things. This is not need, by the way. This is not like, you're not a game unless you have these, right? These, I think, are four wonderful goals to have for a multiplayer competitive game. Let's see if I can tell you while killing the shit out of this man. If only I could steal you. Uh, so I'm going to hit like this. Death to the Point. Do this. Oops. Four really desirable qualities to have for a multiplayer competitive game, okay? The first one is actually the most important one. And I'm going to call it the engine. The engine. All competitive multiplayer games need an engine. An engine is the thing, the mechanism in the game that draws players together, causing them to actually interact with one another. It's what actually brings them together. That's your play? That's your play. It actually brings them together and the mechanism that propels the game towards completion. These are all pieces of the engine. An engine, in a functional sense, is what is t causing a loop to happen. Like, you interact with the person, you interact with the person, you interact with the person, and the game's over, right? You, you need that engine that's pulling people Let together. Change your mind. Right away. Okay, let's run down, too. You need that engine. You need... You need that engine. There's a lot of games that struggled with this engine. Do you remember in the days of bad arena shooters? Two arms, men. So you better be careful. These men have two arms. Right away. Really, 
me of bad arena shooters where two people would just camp and sit there. That's all they would do is they'd just sit there. Because there was no better thing to do, right? Someone would come out, get one kill, and go, all right, sweet. And then they'd run away to the best camping spot on the map, and they'd sit there. There was no engine. There was nothing bringing them together. The way that the game right went to conclusion was the sort of muddled petering out of gameplay. Not so fun. Traditional RTS games struggle to have a good engine that's bringing people together. Drawing them together. Has a little bit of an easier time ending a game cleanly in an RTS because boy is it hard to come back after you lose a whole bunch of things in a finish fight. That drives that game towards completion really fast. All right, so first one. Reporting for duty. Game needs a really good engine. Second thing that many that is a very wonderful and desirable quality for a better game is strategy. I want to have some strategy in there. And I shouldn't say it needs to be deeply, wildly strategic like chess, but you want to have this feeling that the decisions that you're making, the choices that you're making, matter. That they have meaningful things going on there. But as a designer, you don't actually make strategy. That's, what, that's a tool players, or that's something that players create. It's kind of interesting. How do you make something be strategic. Okay. Third thing is wonderful quality for multiplayer competitive games to have is some sort of execution skill, some sort of high variance guy is hard to wiggle this finger. Some sort of high variance, high skill band action with a very quick loop. Because if a game is only decisions and no execution, I mean it can be really hard to know what you need to do better. I mean if you've ever played a game of chess against someone who's better than you, it is really hard to figure out, like, what what you should do in the next game. <laughs> it's, it, it takes a crap ton of study, right? But a lot of times, execution-based tasks, like shooting a hoop, very clear, very rewarding, and it's a great way, if you are behind strategically, to get ahead executionally, right? If you're behind in chess pieces, you can't micro your chess pieces better to get ahead. And the fourth thing is variety of content. I should call this content. These are, these are four really nice qualities for a multiplayer competitive game to have. Really nice things. So here's why I think that Counter-Strike is just amazing, right? First of all, the engine of interaction. Counter-Strike is an asymmetric game. It says, you're terrorist, you're counter-terrorist. You both have different goals. Counter-terrorist, you're gonna win. Terrorist, you have to plant the bomb unless you want to lose the game. So immediately that drives terrorists to move out. It drives the interaction. Short rounds that have irreversible wins. Like if you win the round, you won the round. <laughs> Done. Clear. Clean. Okay. Strategy. I will argue the strategy, the way that you create strategy in the game is you have permanent and semi-permanent consequences for the choices that you make. If in Counter-Strike when you die, you respawn five seconds later, it would not have the near strategic feel that the perma round death has, where when two people have ki been killed, whoa, they're permanently dead, and now it's five on three. This is a new situation for both sides, and they have to account for which of the two that died and where and what information they saw, and that has a really meaningful impact on the remainder of that round. The way the money works, it carries from round to round. If you win round one in a CS match, you didn't buy anything, you have enough for a full buy and some nice gun round two but if you bought like almost anything in the first round you, you can't do that in round two when you won so you start to feel the rippling impact of those purchases as the game goes on so that's something that's really lovely is that counter-strike does have this uh, like a really nice strategic feel to it third execution oh my god the gun playing counter-strike i've talked about so many times it's amazing the depth in there first of all any game with aiming itself is like immediately has some nice execution uh, uh, traits to it. By the way, the spray pattern works and all this. The fact that you can put any grenade anywhere, oh my god, with smoke grenades, where you can put one here and put one there and put one there, <laughs> awesome. And last, content, the game can be played on all sorts of different maps. And as long as the balance is 
okay for both sides. It doesn't even have to be 50-50 for both sides. It can be like 65-35 in favor of one of the sides because they swap ends. So it's much easier to create a lot, lot, lot of content for the game. That's why I think it's just like so amazing. It's so great. Like Rocket League, a game I love. Don't I love Rocket League. It doesn't quite have this strategic depth to it. It has a lot of the execution stuff, like very deep in that, but man, just it, it's missing out on a little bit of that um, strategic piece. Uh, you get something like Hearthstone. Okay, I I love Hearthstone. Hearthstone doesn't quite have as much of the executional difficulty. It's um, you will never have someone who can play their cards so much better in the way that there is someone who can aim and counter strike so much better. A lot of it is just uh, from a strategic standpoint. There's a lot of games where it's hard to introduce new content. Um, Hearthstone's not one of them. I'm trying to think of a better example. Um, Rocket League, I think, is, is an example again. It's hard for me to imagine what would the new content be. I guess maps that have different shapes doesn't really have that sort of flexibility that in the cars, I guess, that would be a pretty new thing, right? So I, I this is, again, why I think the Counter-Strike is amazing. Like, there's so many amazing games. You, again, you don't need any of these four, like two of my favorite games right now, Rocket League and Hearthstone, to have, you know, not as high up on, on some of these things. But this is why I love Counter-Strike. Guaranteed tense interaction where I feel like my decisions are actually mattering and I'm using my head, aiming, and with all the different kinds of guns and different kind of spray patterns and throwing down the grenades. And, of course, enough maps and different game modes and gun types for me to just want to endlessly play. I just think that CSGO is just... Awesome. Totally awesome. Why well, I think it's one of the best. And similarly, this is why MOBAs work so well. Laning brings people together and drives the game forward. There's Look, there's a shitload of strategy in MOBAs, and if you ever disagree with me, you're fucking wrong, dude. Uh, <laughs> execution, there's tons of nuance and skill to how you can use your stuff and content. Oh, we got new heroes coming out this month, you know what I'm saying? Um, really cool. Just super cool. Uh, so that's why I think Counter-Strike is the best. We'll be right back. We're gonna take a break and then we're gonna win the whole world.